Hey everyone, this is Philip Zock from Night Fox Audio, and we are doing a product walkthrough of Rendition. It's our latest plugin, and uh, it is a MIDI plugin that gives you the ability to, with the touch of a finger, play full chords and arpeggios uh, into any of your virtual instruments. So I'll show you how we've got it set up right now. We're starting with uh, Rendition on the MIDI plugin section, and then on the input of the track, we have uh, this virtual instrument, which is also coming out from Night Fox Audio called Layered. And Layered is a plugin where you can stack up a bunch of instruments. Right now, we just have a Mark One on the first channel. So here we go. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it nice and clear. Uh, and I've pulled up a preset called the Hit Maker. And just so you know, I, I have a MIDI keyboard here in front of me, and I will only be using just the one finger to play notes, and those notes are going to be uh, translated into full chords uh, by rendition. So first I'm going to set my scale. I can, uh, my key and my scale, I'm going to choose the key of C, the top left here, uh, and then I get a choice from any of the scales that are here. Just to make it easy, I'm going to go C major, so all the white keys work because I'm not a terrific piano player and I don't know scales very well. So, first of all, uh, I'm also going to turn on key restrict. This is going to limit the actual notes that I can play. And you can see down here on the, on the keyboard, the white chords, the white keys, I can press and the black ones are dead to me. And so, I'm just clicking with my mouse. Every note is a full chord. So there's a bunch of settings here. Uh, I'm going to walk through kind of the peripheral things, and then we'll get into chord ARP and modifiers. So again, on the left, we have key uh, set with the knob, scale set with this guy, and then key restrict, which turns off any notes that are not part of the scale. Uh, you can you can turn that on and select nearest so it almost behaves like autotune does with a vocal where every note you play snaps to the nearest note or you can choose inactive and so every note that you play that's not in the scale is just going to be inactive here's your number of zones and you can choose up to four zones and you can edit the size of the zones with these sliders here I generally like to use three zones, one for modifiers, one for chords and arps, and then one for normal mode. Up at the top here, you have your preset selector, and uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then your zones, this is how you select which zone you're editing. And then uh, here is your modes. So the three modes are chord, arpeggiator, and modifiers. On this side, you have chord voicings, uh, and these are latches, so you toggle that spread up, smart invert you can turn on any number of these at the same time and save that in your preset and basically what that does is is it edits the voicing of the chords that show up in the bottom and we'll get into how that works in a minute the other important thing is this big orange button called stop if you've got an arp running and you're not sure where to turn it off or uh, how to stop all the notes from from continuing to play uh, that is your spot to do so all right, let's take a look at the bottom here. Uh, there's a couple different ways to turn on chord. You can click it on here, or you can click it on or off here in the mode, the mode lozenge. Again, you can move and adjust these sliders at the bottom uh, to adjust the size of each zone. All right, let's jump into chord mode. So you can see uh, on the screen here all the settings for chord, and underneath is a progression. Every note I press on the scale is going to be in the key and scale that I've chosen on the top left. And every note is going to perform a full chord. Let's just look at this top section for now. Strum, if I turn that off, it's going to play all of those notes simultaneously. And the more I bring up strum, you can hear it's moving a little bit like someone would actually um, play those chords on the piano. Uh, you can also humanize the time. So, so it doesn't always do that strum the same way every time. And you can humanize velocity. So if I hit a number of times in a row, 
it's playing each note at a slightly different velocity uh, so that it feels a little bit more human. That way, if you play a chord or a note repeatedly, you get a very humanized feel and uh, it, makes, it makes everything feel a little bit more authentic and genuine. Down here is a very powerful part of the tool. This is called progression, and you can reset that to uh, just play the C major scale. But what we've done here is customize each note, and this is part of every preset that's part of uh, that's inside of rendition. We've customized a lot of these scales so that every note you press has a specific set of notes uh, assigned to it. So when I press a C, that's the chord that's applied to it. And if I want to add notes to that, I just simply click in there. And that is a very powerful way to add interesting color to your chords. Uh, we've done all of that work for you. So uh, if this looks like too much, just pull up a preset and see what works. So every one of these notes in the key of C has a different chord applied to it. Uh, and again, you can edit those pretty easily. Progression is incredibly powerful because uh, it can give you control over very complex chords at the touch of a button, and everything you touch just works. I'm going to turn down a little bit of that humanize because we went a little too far, and that strum. Okay, so uh, that's the chord section, and I will go over to the voicings uh, for chords since we're in it. So. Some of my favorites are Smart Invert. You turn that on, and you see how it keeps a nice tight group on all of those chord voicings. Uh, instead of marching up the scale with the same interval um, like some of these other chord builders would do, this one is, is playing it more like a human being would do. So I love that Smart Invert function, especially on some of these more complex chord shapes. It groups them a little bit tighter and puts them near to where the hand would be playing them on the keyboard. Uh, another really fun one is Spread Up. It takes a couple uh, color notes and puts them up the octave. And it just gives a much uh, more open feel to all of those chords. Spread Down does the same thing in the other direction. So you can see how I'm taking up so many octaves just by playing literally one note. Uh, another couple things are octave down and up, so it adds an octave above. So again, if we do spread up and octave up, we're really taking up a large uh, section of the keyboard. Chord rotate is pretty sweet. I hit a note repeatedly, and it kind of randomizes what notes play uh, up and down an octave. So again, just another way of implementing a human feel into this product. So there's a couple other ones. Power chord, uh, down octave, just basically puts it down an octave, which would free up this space for leads or uh, any other stuff, that uh, maybe an arpeggiator or something else you might want to do there. Up octave, same thing. Uh, and then you have a deep first, deep third, and deep fifth. So if I deep first, that just drops that first an octave down. So you get uh, very interesting versions of chords that are already complex. Uh, so you can see how somebody might use any combination of these. And that gives you a lot of really creative and intuitive control over uh, your chords. Again, I'm never pressing more than one note at a time uh, with my hand. I'm literally just using my index finger on my left hand, which is my not my dominant hand. Okay, so uh, let's move into ARP. ARP mode is amazing uh, because it can combine with chord mode so that, again, with one finger, you're playing complex chords, and then the ARP takes over and performs them rhythmically. The settings in ARP mode are type, and you can see all the ARP types here listed. You've got skip up and down, uh, bottom to top, thumb and pinky up and down, and then together. And so a lot of these different ARP types are really kind of different than stuff that I've used. So like, for example, skip down. 
it's not just playing up or down, it's kind of bouncing around and thumb up. I'm gonna add an octave so you can really see. So every other note is that bottom note. Very cool um, and very useful if uh, for whatever kind of music you're making. Uh, it just gives you the ability to move a lot faster on the keyboard uh, than most piano players I know. Arp speed. So you can choose how fast that arp moves and that locks to your DAW. If you're using it in standalone mode, you can save that, save the tempo of each specific uh, preset so that uh, if you're using this live, you can run through a bunch of presets and each of them are at a different tempo and scale and key. Uh, so your whole live set can be saved via the presets and set list functions. Next up is swing and steps. I'm gonna just increase the steps to 16 real quick um, because that's kind of a normal uh, range for how people would loop. Uh, and you just go ahead and dra drag across on those tables and you get some different velocities. You can edit them like that or roll the dice. So I'm just gonna bring it a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna swing it. You can hear that. It's kind of bouncing a little bit. Super cool. I'll turn that swing all the way off. And again, the humanize functions here take what's already happening with velocity and with the timing, and they make it even more human. So it, it kind of takes all of the settings that you already have here on the tables, and uh, it expands upon that. Then at the bottom, you've got latch. So whatever I press is going to run until I press something else. You've also got hold, which in chord setting is going to get crazy, uh, but basically it adds uh, each additional note to the ARP. So I'm going to press another note, and you're going to see how it's going to add the whole other chord. And that's kind of cool, but also a little bit too many notes. So I'm going to turn that hold off. Uh, that's the ARP settings. And again, it's make sure you don't miss this bottom section where they get a little bit weird. I'll show you together as well. I love that one because you can get it really expressive with especially uh, editing the velocity. And that note length. So that's, that's a really fun one. All right, let's head to the last... Uh, mode which is mods and i have mods set up on this tiny little section of the keyboard on the very bottom so mods is a 12 note range that lives wherever you want it to live you could put it up here on the top uh, but the interesting thing about mods it's only 12 notes so anything after that is going to be uh, disabled so i like to put it all the way at the bottom and then put my next zone right up next to it like that so basically what these mods do it's kind of similar to chord voicings in that it brings something special to the chord but it only does it momentarily so as you press it uh, it makes that edit and then as soon as you let go that chord is back to whatever it normally is so i'm going to turn off the arp for this middle section it will just be a chord uh, and we're going to go back down here okay so here are all your modifier options. You have smart invert, spread up and down, and we've already seen some of these over on the right. So on this, this key here, uh, we have strum toggle, and I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna play a chord, and I'm strumming that chord right now. And then if I hit strum toggle, uh, I'm gonna do without, and then hit strum toggle. So you can see how I can momentarily turn on or off that strum function. I'm also going to try rotate. So rotate is uh, this note here, and I'm going to play without playing it. And now I'm going to play with it. So you can see that it enacts just uh, for the times that I'm holding it down. The same is true of all those, and you can customize that whole list. You can pick from drop octave or two uh, plus octave or 
sus2, add sixth. Um, I've kind of made a set of these that I like in a row. So I go augmented, diminished, spread up, octave down and up, legato and staccato. Uh, and then I have smart invert, uh, arp toggle on and off. So you can turn the arp on and off as you're, as you're performing, uh, rotate and strum. So this is a really powerful section to customize with just two fingers, one doing a modifier and the other doing a chord, um, how, how your chords interact uh, as you play. I'm going to head up to settings here, and you can see uh, you've got window size. You can also drag the window in the bottom corner there to resize. Uh, and, then, and then you've got uh, color options too. The LCD can either be color mode, dark mode, or light mode, and the same thing can happen with the background. And you can choose those separately because I kind of like, I think my favorite setting is dark mode with a light LCD. Um, I just love the way that looks, and the contrast is easy to see on the screen. There will be a few more settings here uh, with additional releases, uh, so you'll see that as we update the product. I think that's it for rendition. Let me know if you have any thoughts or uh, if you've got features that you would like to see us implement, because we are constantly adding new ARP types and uh, other features. So yeah, let us know. Thanks for checking it out. Have a blast using it. Make something super creative and tag us when you do.